Hello and welcome back to this series about Git Merge and Git Rebase. In the previous videos we learned about Git Merge and in this video we'll learn about rebasing. We'll understand what it is, when it can be applied and how to rebase with confidence. Under the hood, Git Rebase and Git Merge are very different things. So it makes me wonder, why do people even compare them? Well, the reason is their usage. When working with Git, we usually work in different branches and introduce changes to those branches. In the previous video, we gave an example where John and Paul were co-authoring a new song. They started from the main branch and then each diverged, modified the lyrics and committed their changes. Then the two wanted to integrate their changes, which is something that happens very frequently when working with Git. And basically, there are two main ways to integrate changes introduced in different branches in Git. Or in other words, different commits and commit histories. And these ways are merge and rebase. After the previous video, you should already understand Git merge pretty well. We saw that when performing a merge, we create a merge commit, where the contents of this commit are a combination of the two branches, and it also has two parents, one in each branch. Like in previous videos, I'm going to use branch for simplicity, but of course we can also merge two commits or any number of commits. So say we are on the branch John branch and we run git merge pull branch. We will get to this state where on John branch, there is a new commit with two parents. The first one will be the commit on John branch where head pointed to before performing the merge. In our case, that's commit six. The second will be the commit pointed to by Paul's branch that is commit nine in our case. Look at the history graph here we created a diverged history. We can actually see where it branched and where it merged again. So when we consider it merge, we do not rewrite history, but rather add a commit to the existing history and specifically a commit that creates a diverged history. So considering this history, say we are on the branch John branch and we run git merge pull branch. We'll get to this state where on John branch, there is a new commit with two parents. The first one will be the commit on John branch where head pointed to before performing the merge. In our case, that is commit six. The second will be the commit pointed to by Paul's branch that is commit nine. Also John branch would point to the newly created merge commit. Let's give it a try. I'll check out John branch and let's merge Paul branch and consider the history. That's exactly what we see. We have John branch pointed to by head as well, which points to a new merge commit, which has two parents. One of them is commit six and the other commit nine. So again, when we consider git merge, we do not rewrite history, but rather we add a commit to the existing history and specifically a commit that creates a diverged history. If we use git rebase, something different happens. If we are on Paul branch, let's undo the merge. So just to be clear, we are at this state again. And let's say this time I'm going to be on pull branch. And now what I want to do is use git rebase John branch. What we did now, and this is the result, is to go to the common ancestor of John's branch and Paul's branch. And then we take the patches introduced in the commits on Paul's branch and apply those changes to John's branch. So here we use rebase to take the changes that were committed on one branch, that were committed on one branch, Paul's branch, and replay them on a different branch, 
John branch. Well, what does that mean? It's useful to think of Rebase as performing git cherry pick, a command that we introduced in a previous video. As a reminder, git cherry pick takes a commit, computes the patch this commit introduces by computing the difference between the parent's commit and the commit itself, and then cherry pick replays this difference. So here we have exactly the history we saw in the drawing so far with John branch, Paul branch, before performing either rebase or merge. And now we're gonna perform cherry pick manually. So if we look at the difference introduced by commit five, I'm gonna use git diff, and now I'm writing main as it points to commit four and nine a eight six to ob, which is the shell one value of commit five. We can see that John started working on a song called Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. As a reminder, we can also use the command git show to get the same output. So for that, we can just use git show and then the shell one value of commit five, we get exactly the same output. Now, if we cherry pick this commit, we'll introduce this change specifically on the active branch. So let's switch to main first and create another branch just so we're clear. So let's check out my branch and cherry pick this commit. So git cherry pick and this commit exactly nine eight eight six two o b and let's consider the log cool so it seems like we copy pasted commit five remember that even though it has the same commit message and it introduces the same changes and in this case, it even points to the same tree object as the original commit five. It is still a different commit object as it was created in a different timestamp. So obviously it also has a different cha one value compared to the original commit five. If we look at the changes, so let's use git show head, they are the same as commit fives. And of course, if we look at the file, it will be in the same state as it was after the original commit five. Again, note that the newly created commit is not identical to the original commit and in a few senses. Obviously it has a different timestamp as it was introduced at a different later time. It might also have a different parent as we are playing the patch on a different commit. In this specific case, we replayed a change from a commit whose parent was commit four but we could have also replayed the changes from this commit on another commit. Optionally, the result of git cherry pick will create a commit that points to a different tree object. In case the state at the parent of the original commit is the same as the state of the commit we are applying the patch to, in other words, in case they point to the same tree object, then the result of applying the same patch would result in the same tree. But if we start with a different tree and apply the same patch, we would obviously get a different tree. As a result of these changes, the new commit obviously has a different SHA-1 value. Okay, so now we can remove the new branch so it doesn't appear on our history every time. So let me check out main and delete my branch. And now we can go from cherry pick and understand Git rebase. So Git rebase can be viewed as a way to perform multiple cherry picks one after the other. That is to replay multiple commits. This is not the only thing we can do with rebase, but it's a good starting point for our explanation. So it's time to play with Git rebase. I hope you're as excited as I am. So before we merged Paul branch into John branch, what would happen if we rebased Paul branch on top of John branch? Well, we would get a very different history. In essence, it would seem as if we took the changes introduced in the commits on Paul branch and replayed them on John branch. The result would be a linear history. 
The process with rebasing one branch on top of another is as follows. Step one, find the common ancestor. Step two, identify the commits to be replayed. Step three, for every commit X, compute the difference between the parent of X and X, and then store it as a patch. Step four, move head to the new base. Step five, apply the generated patches in order on the target branch. Each time, create a new commit object with a new state. The process of making new commits with the same change sets as existing ones is also called replaying those commits, a term we have already used. And step six, update the branch reference to point to the latest commit. So let us do that, or to be precise, ask Git to do that for us. So let me git check out Paul branch, and then I would rebase John branch. Okay, let's observe the history. I'm gonna use git lol. So we can see it's a linear history, right? We have John branch and we have Paul's branch that is the commits that were introduced by Paul in Paul's branch, commits seven, eight, and nine actually applied on top of John branch. You can also use GG. As a reminder from the previous videos, GG is an external tool that I use. It's an open source tool and Git lol is an LES I added on top of Git. I'm going to provide links to them both in case you're interested. So again, we can see here a linear history. So whereas with Git merge, we added to the history, with Git rebase, we rewrite history. We create new commit objects. In addition, the result is a linear history graph rather than a diverging graph. The commit is called rebase because it changes the base commit of the branch it's run from. That is, in our case, we can say that before running git rebase, the base of Paul branch was commit four. We can say this is where the branch was born. Now we're asking it to give it another base that is, pretend as if it had been born from commit six. To do that, Git took what used to be commit seven and replayed the changes introduced in this commit onto commit six, as this is the new base, and then Git created a new commit object. This latter object differs from the original commit seven in three aspects. First, it has a different timestamp. Second, it has a different parent commit, in this case, commit six rather than commit four. And third, the tree it is pointing to is different as the changes were introduced to the tree pointed to by commit six and not the tree pointed to by commit four. Notice the last commit here, commit nine. The snapshot it represents, that is the tree that it points to, is exactly the same tree we would get by merging the two branches together. The state of the files in our Git repository would be the same if we used Git merge here. It's only the history that is different and the commit objects, of course. Now we can simply use checkout main and Git merge full branch. Oh, wait, let me ask you, what would happen if I ran this command? So look at the history. If I'm going to merge, main now and pull branch. So merging pull branch into main, what's going to happen? Well, indeed, Git can simply perform a fast forward merge as the history is completely linear. As a result, main and pull branch now point to the same commit as we can verify. So we can see head pointing to main, which points to commit nine and also pull branch points to commit nine. If you need a reminder about fast forward merges, please check out the previous video where we introduced it. Okay, now that we understand the basics of rebase, let us consider more advanced cases. For some cases, additional switches and arguments to the rebase command will come in handy. In the previous example, when we only said rebase, Git replayed all the commits from the common ancestor to the tip of the current branch. But rebase is a superpower. It's an almighty command capable of, well, rewriting history. And it can come in handy if we want to modify history to make it our own. 
So let us undo the merge by making main point two commit four again. And let's undo the rebasing by checking out whole branch and get it to point to the original commit nine. So let's see if we have it here. Okay, so this is the original commit nine. Great. All right, so we were able to undo the rebase as well as the merge. You notice that we got to exactly the same history we used to have. As we mentioned in previous videos, commit nine doesn't just disappear when it's not reachable from the current head. Rather, it's still stored in the object database. And as we used git reset now to change head to point to this commit, we were able to retrieve it and also its parent commits since they are also stored in git's internal database. Okay, so I cleared some space here. So let's start with git show head. Okay, we can see here the verse penny lane, the barber shaves another customer all the way to the chorus. Let's look before that. Penny lane, there is a fireman with an hourglass and the one before that, penny lane, there is a barber showing photographs. Okay. So these changes are nice, but perhaps Paul doesn't want this kind of history. Rather, he wanted to see him as if he introduced the changes in commit seven and commit eight as a single commit. This would make sense. So for that, we can use an interactive rebase. To do that, we add the minus I switch to the rebase command. So what I would do now, I want to rebase these commits and pretend as if they're base commit four. So I'm going to read rebase minus I main, which points to commit four. What we tell Git now is use a new base commit four. So we are asking Git to go back to all commits that were introduced after commit four and are reachable from the current head and replay them. And for every commit that is replayed, Git would ask us what we'd like to do with it. So as we can see, one option is to use pick. This is the default behavior, which tells Git to replay the changes introduced in this commit. So in this case, if we just leave it as is and pick our commits, we'll get the same history and Git won't even create new commit objects. Another option is to squash. A squashed commit will have its contents folded into the contents of the commit preceding it. So in our case, Paul would like to squash commit eight into commit seven. So we could just change it here to squash or just S for short, as you can see below. As you can see, there are also other options here, but we won't go into all of them in this video. So let's allow the rebase to run. And now we get prompted for a commit message for the newly created commit. So let's call it commits seven plus eight. So this would be our commit message, sorry, seven plus eight. Cool, let's look at our history. Awesome, exactly what we wanted. We have commit nine pointing to commits seven plus eight, which is one commit object that includes both the changes from commit seven and commit eight. Now you would notice that commit nine also has a different SHA-1 value compared to the SHA-1 value of the original commit nine. Why is that? Well, again, we had to create a new commit object. It now points to the commit with a SHA-1 value of 4DCBC8C instead of the original commit eight. So obviously we created a new commit object. It has a new SHA-1 value. Isn't that cool? Git rebase grants us unlimited control over the shape of any branch. We can use it to reorder commit if we like, or to remove incorrect changes, or modify a change in retrospect, or perhaps move the base of our branch onto another commit, any commit that we wish. Let's consider one more example. Say we get to main again, and delete the pointers to Paul branch and John branch so we don't see them in the commit graph anymore. So git branch minus the old branch and the same for 
John branch. And now we branch from main to a new branch. And now we'll add a few changes here and commit them. So let's go to code.py. So back to code samples and let's get some changes. And I'll add these changes and commit. Let's get back to main. and introduce another change here. And this time I'll create a doc string. This is a sample file. Cool. And I'll stage and commit. And yet another change. So let me add an author, we'll stage it and commit. Oh, wait, now I realize I actually want the changes introduced in commit 11 to also be a part of my new branch. Uh, what can we do about it? Hmm, consider the history. What I want is instead of having commit 11 reside only on the main branch as it does right now, to be on both the main branch as well as the new branch. So visually, I would want to move it down the graph here. Can you see where I'm going? Well, as we understand, Rebase allows us to basically replay the changes introduced in new branch, those introduced in commit 10, as if they had been originally conducted on commit 11 rather than on commit four. To do that, we can use other arguments of Git Rebase. We tell Git that we want to take all the history introduced between the common ancestor of main and new branch, which is commit four, and have the new base for that history be commit 11. So to do that, we use Git Rebase minus minus onto, and now we provide the SHA-1 value of commit 11. We rebase onto commit 11 and we want to take the common ancestor of main and new branch. And now look at our beautiful history. So this is only for this branch. Let's use GG again. We can see that we have commit 11 pointing to commit four and from commit 11, it seems that both commit 12 and commit 10 branch out. Cool. Let's consider another case. So say I started working on a branch and by mistake, I started working from feature branch one rather than from main. So let's create feature branch one for that. So let's go to main and check out minus B feature branch one. And now we raise new branch just again, so we don't see it in the graph anymore. So git branch the new branch. All right, so let's create a new file. Let's call it one.py and write hello world. Also, cool. let's stage it. And I branched out now by mistake from feature branch one, feature branch two, and I created another file. And say I introduced even some more code here. So two.py. So I made a few commits and got back to feature branch one to add some more there. Now I consider my history and I realize I, oh, I made a mistake. So I actually wanted my branch feature branch two to be born from the main branch 
rather than from feature branch one. How can we achieve that? Well, what we want to do is replace the parent of our first commit on feature branch two, which is commit 14, to be on top of main branch. In this case, it's commit 12, rather than the beginning of feature branch one, in this case, commit 13. So again, we are creating a new base for the first commit on feature branch two. So first we'll switch to feature branch two. And now we can use git rebase. And I want to rebase this branch, that is the changes introduced in this branch onto main and provide the shell one value of commit 13. So now we have our feature branch two based on main rather than feature branch one. The syntax is git rebase minus minus onto the new parent followed by the old parent. And considering our new history, we can see now commit 15 pointing to commit 14 pointing to commit 12 main, which is exactly what we wanted to have. We kind of moved feature branch two backwards to be born from main. This is very cool. Now we can also use git rebase while looking at a history of a single branch rather than rebasing from one branch to another. Say I'm now on feature branch two and I decide to edit code.py once again. So first I decided to change all strings to be wrapped by double quotes rather than single quotes. And now I decided to add a new function at the beginning of file. Oh, sorry, that was actually supposed to be commit 17. So let me use git commit amend to change that. So this is commit 17, right? We already had commit 16. Yep. Okay, so this is commit 17. Good. So now I decided to add a new function at the beginning of the file. So I'll use nanocode.py. And let's create a new function here. Of course, I'll still adhere to the convention of the double quotes. And now I realized I actually forgot to change the single quotes to double quotes wrapping the main. So let's do that. Go here and I'll change the quotes here. All right. Now all is well again. This would be commit 19. Great. Now consider the history. It isn't really nice, is it? I mean, we have two commits that are related to one another, commit 17 and commit 19, where we changed the single quotes to double quotes, but they are actually split by the unrelated commit 18, where we added a new function. So what can we do about it? Intuitively, I want to edit the history here. So we can rebase the history from commit 17 to commit 19 on top of commit 15. So to do that, we can use git rebase on to, and now I will specify commit 15 as the new parent, but it's actually also the old parent. If I do just that, nothing interesting would happen. So I can add minus I or minus minus interactive to be explicit. So now we get this and we want to put commit 19 before 18, so like so. And we can even go further and squash them together like so. And we can give it the commit message, commit 17 plus 19. And now see our beautiful history. You can see that we have here commit 15, then commit 17 plus 19. And in the end, we have commit 18 as we wanted. Really cool. Now let's look at what the new commit introduced, that is commit 17 plus 19. So I would use git show, and then the show one of this commit. 
Nice. We can see indeed that it includes changing the single quote to double quote, both on the main and new feature, but also in the if name equals main clause. All right, let's see yet another example. Say we have this history on another repo that I created. And let's look at the history. Cool, pretty simple linear history here. And in order not to confuse ourselves, I created commits with the names A, B, C, D rather than using numbers. Cool, so before we play around with it, I can even store a tag to commit F just so we can get back to it later if we want to. I'm not sure we'll need it, but just to be really explicit, let's write git tag and let's call it original commit F. Cool. So now we also have a tag when you do commit F. If you don't remember what a tag is, it's also a named reference to a commit, just like a branch, but it doesn't move when we add commits on top of that commit. That is, if we add a new commit now, main would move because it's a branch, but original commit F would remain as is. Cool, now say that actually, I don't want the changes in commits C and D to be included. I can use interactive rebase like before and remove their changes. Or I can use again, git rebase onto. What we can say here is that we rebase head on top of commit B, where the old parent was actually commit D and now it should be commit B. So we kind of move E and F and give them another base commit B. We can do it like so. So I'm going to rebase onto commit B. And the previous parent was commit D. And I want to rebase all commits all the way through head. So as we mentioned head explicitly, notice that git didn't change head. So we get head pointing to main and the original commit F. So note that GG shows me only the history from the named references. But actually what we did here is to move head. So let's look at the history from head. And here indeed we can see A, B, E, F as if E and F had been created on top of B directly. I don't know about you, but these things make me really happy. By the way, we could have omitted head from the previous command as this is actually the default value for the third parameter. So just using git rebase onto and then the sha1 value of commit B and then sha of commit D would have the same effect. The last parameter actually tells Git where the end of the current sequence of commits to rebase is. So let's say we want to get to the same history as before. So let's use Git checkout original commit F. It's actually still also main. So it could have also written Git checkout main and let's Git LOL. So again, we have C and D here as part of this history. And now we want only commit E to be on the branch based on commit B. That is, we want to have a new branch branching from B containing only commit E on top of commit B. So what does this mean in terms of rebase? We basically want to take commit E and this commit only and change its base to be commit B. So we want to replay the changes introduced in commit E onto commit B. We can do it like so. So git rebase onto B and then D as before. And now the shell one value of E. And now the history looks like this. E branching from B. Cool, so basically the syntax of git rebase with onto is git rebase onto 
new base or new parent. So in this case, the new base, the new parent was commit B. Then the old base or the old parent would choose to be D because D was the parent of E and then until. So this time we wanted to stop at commit E inclusive rather than go on and replay commit F as well. As we've seen, git rebase and git rebase onto specifically is a super powerful tool. Now, an important note about conflicts. Note that when performing a rebase, we may have conflicts just as when merging. We may have conflicts since we're trying to apply commits on a different base, perhaps a base where these patches do not apply. So for example, consider the previous repository again, and specifically consider the change introduced in commit 12 pointed to by main. So let's get your code. Main, we have commit 12 here, show. This commit instructs git to add a line after these two lines here and before these three lines of context. So we're trying to rebase commit 12 onto another commit. If for some reason, these lines don't exist as they do in the patch on the commit we are rebasing onto, then we will have a conflict. Cool. So we now know what git rebase is and how to use interactive rebase or rebase onto. As I hope you agree, git rebase is indeed a super powerful tool. Yet it has one huge drawback. Git rebase changes the history. This means that you should not rebase commits that exist outside of your local copy of the repository and that other people may have based their commits on. In other words, if the only commits in question are those you created locally, go ahead, use rebase, have fun, go wild. But if the commits have been pushed, this can lead to a huge problem as someone else may rely on these commits that you later overwrite and then you and they will have different versions of the repository. This is unlike merge, which as we have seen, does not modify the history. For example, consider the last case where we rebased and resulted in this history. So back to the rebase example repo. And actually wanna look from head after the rebase. Let's say that I've already pushed this branch to the remote. And after I had pushed the branch, another developer pulled it and branched out from commit C. Now the other developer didn't know that meanwhile, I was locally rebasing my branch and would later push it again. This results in an inconsistency. The other developer works from a commit that is no longer available on my copy of the repository. I will not elaborate on what exactly this may cause in this video, as my main message here is that you should definitely avoid such cases. If you're interested in what would actually happen, I'll leave a link to a useful resource in the description below. For now, let's summarize what we've covered. In this video, we introduced Git Rebase, a super powerful tool to rewrite history in Git. We considered using it with one, two, or three parameters with or without the onto switch. The next video will wrap up this series where we recap our understanding and learning from the previous videos and also consider what we've learned to apply our knowledge to different use cases and when we should use each tool. In the meantime, please leave your comments, requests, questions, or feedback down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for being with me for this series and I'll see you all next time.